What is going on everybody? This is Dylan with your weekly gear news update. We have a bunch of stuff. So let's just jump right into it. Before we do that though, please do me a favor, hit the subscribe button and the little bell and the little like button because that does help us out and it also makes sure that you don't miss any cool guitar videos because I know you like guitar stuff. All right, let's jam some news. First of all, we're gonna talk about Death by Audio. They just came out with their new Space Bender chorus, but it's not just a chorus. There's a modulator in there too, and it's got three buttons on it. Intensity, modulation, and delay time. So you can go from a really short delay time to really long, almost like really long delay time. The modulator changes it between a wave oscillator and an LFO. Uh, this thing can basically go into super spacey, crazy sounds. So the idea is you will never worry about having enough chorus or enough modulation in your chorus uh, to make spacey sounds. And apparently they say this pedal is not one you just throw on your pedal board and set it once. This is one that you mess with and try to make noises with. There's a lot of these things coming out right now, and I really dig it. I'm always one for using the guitar for sounds other than guitar, if that makes sense. And this sounds uh, like one of those pedals that will work for that. Two Notes Audio Engineering has come out with a new set of cab simulators. So if you are an in the box, as they call it, kind of recording dude that uses a computer and an interface and you're uh, trying to get your cab sim sounds proper, the five cabinets that are in here are in collaboration with Steve Stevens. And some of these cabinets were actually used uh, like some of the stuff he did with Michael Jackson. So pretty well-known cabinet sounds um, in collaboration with Steve Stevens. So this stuff should be pretty good. And I think it's gonna be somewhere around 40 bucks for those five cabinets. Strymon's new Zelza phaser is gonna take you into phasiness that you've never heard of before because it's got a four stage phaser on one side and then it's got a six stage phaser on the other side so that's going to bring you into your flange chorus more spacey territory with phasery sounds the cool part about this thing is is it's a strymon so it's going to do a million things basically um the long and the short of it is that i got out of it's cool is you can actually run both of those there's enough um in out for this thing where you can run one or both phasers you can run them in series you can you know run them into each other you can run them in parallel uh there's a bunch of stuff that this pedal does it's so funny because so many people are like how many phasers do you need but you need apparently a lot because this thing can do a bunch of stuff i mean they don't call it a multi-dimensional phaser for nothing so some flexibility there to get the sounds that you want origin effects have come out with their kind of TS clone, their Tube Screamer clone. And what they're doing with this thing is very interesting. They're trying to solve a specific problem that they feel, and I feel, a lot of people feel, I feel, uh, that the original green pedal has. And that is that when you turn your volume down on your guitar um, or you play softer, some of that mid-range punch and drive kind of goes away. It sort of flattens out. Um, with your pick dynamics or when you turn the volume down, which makes sense uh, as to how overdrive pedals work, why it would do that. But if you don't want that, if you want that kind of mid-range poke and you want that clarity all the time, they've put what they call an adaptive circuit in here to adapt to your playing style and to adapt to like the volume settings that you're using on your guitar and there's three different settings for it so it's like totally off so you have like a normal ts808 and then there's like a middle uh which sort of adapts it and then a all the way adaptive so there's like three stages to it and then the other thing is is there's a voice switch uh that you can switch and it changes from your normal kind of ts808 sound and it bumps the mid-range up into the higher right like higher mid-range a little bit for a little bit more clarity and a little bit more top end this sounds like a really versatile kind of iteration of the ts808 i dig this um i think i want to try one if i can find a link to this i'll put it in the description below as well as to as much of this other stuff as i can find 
during the news today. Do me a favor and use those links if you can, because it does help out the channel. Even if you don't buy anything, just shop around, check it out. It does help out the channel uh, a little bit. I do appreciate it very, very much. Uh, let's talk about Mojo Hand Effects. The Mojo Hand Effects Octaverse is a delay pedal where you're basically taking your signal, reversing it back into the pedal, and then going either an octave up or an octave down. This is a very unique sound. I'm not 100% sure how often you would use it, but it's very cool, and I've never seen a pedal that does this before. Not quite like this anyway. So check it out, the Mojo Hand Effects Octaverse. Jim Root uh, from Slipknot has collaborated with Dunlop to come out with a new set of strings, actually two new sets of strings, for drop A and drop B. So the problem with going that low, obviously, is you need, um, well, you need it to not be all flubby and weird, so you need it to be tight enough. The other thing is you want to have some kind of clarity to those strings. It, once they get kind of big, because you have to make them bigger, you don't want it to sound like a bass, you still want it to sound like a guitar. So getting all of that right, I would imagine with coarse center diameters and wrap diameters and playing with all those things they do with strings, they finally got a set that they dig. And basically, um, the drop A set is 12, 16, 20, 38, 48, 64. And the drop B is not quite as heavy, 11, 15, 20, 36, 42, and 56. So that will get you there. And apparently one of the things that Jim Root says is that he really wanted them to not lose that kind of high end that a guitar is supposed to have. Uh, I've heard this before, people go that low and it does sound too chuggy, if that makes sense. So getting that balance right is important. So Dunlop strings, the drop A, let's see, they call them, well, they're just the Jim Root uh, signature strings. So drop A and drop B. Earlier this year, Steve Vai came out with a new, well, he's been coming out with a, a few new guitars, but this particular one um, was like a light blue, like a almost like a creamy light blue. Anyway, they came out with a new set of pickups called the Utopia. In that guitar, they have these like special, really cool laser cut, you can see them here, uh, laser cut covers. And they're their normal, they took the Evolution pickups and they evolved them just to, uh, evolved them just a little bit uh, basically to get a little thicker low end um, adjusted the high end a little bit too and they're called the Utopia pickups they're 159 bucks a piece uh, they look really really cool and uh, yeah now you can put them in your gem or other guitar that matches blue because that's the color of them but the DiMarzio Utopia I wish I could make covers like that those are really really cool Nux, the uh, Chinese pedal maker, has come out with the Nux Mighty Pro, Mighty Plug Pro. So this is one of those little, you plug it into the jack of your guitar and headphones into the other side, um, amps. Now, people have been asking me forever to review this thing. Maybe I should grab one now because this is pretty cool. 21 amps, uh, 24 cabs, seven bass cabs, three acoustic guitar sounds, and two custom IRs in this thing, as well as actually a bunch of pedals too. And you can you can use the, use an app with this thing to control it all, which the Fender one obviously is way more basic than that. I like the little Fender one, but I've not tried one of these. So uh, I'm probably gonna grab one of these and maybe we'll do a review on it as well. I'll leave a link to it in the description. I think it might be time to check this thing out. It's very, very cool. It's 109 bucks, which I think is the same price as the Fender one. But man, if it's app controllable and has all that stuff in it, it's definitely worth a look. I'll leave a link to it down below. The Fender Custom Shop is back at it again with their crazy wacky selves doing crazy wacky things that cost wacky amounts of money. Uh, the Minions Rise of Gru collection that these guitars are going to um, when they sell them, because they will sell them, even though you see them and what they look like. That acoustic guitar is $71,000. The other electric guitars, and I think even the ukulele, the little acoustic thing, are 50 grand a piece. 
Um, but this is all going towards the Fender Play Foundation. So somebody will buy these, spend that money. That is nuts, but it's for a good cause because the Fender Play Foundation is a thing and they definitely uh, put a lot of effort into A, promoting it and B, funding it. So this is a very cool thing that they're doing. Not for everybody, but again, for a good cause. Fender Japan is doing a very cool thing. A double humbucker, no bass circuit, black, torque guard, block inlays, jazz master. And this is going to have the wide range uh, Kunife humbuckers in it. So good, actual, proper humbuckers that go in this thing. It's going to be somewhere around 1500 bucks, I think. This is a really cool guitar. Just a three-way switch, um, a normal bridge, normal jazz master stuff, but those Cunefe humbuckers as well as that no bass circuit. So just like a regular three-way, super cool humbucker guitar, 25 and a half scale, obviously. So this thing is super killer. I really, really like it. Speaking of wide range humbuckers, you don't need to do these ones. If you have Cunefe humbuckers, you don't need to do them, but it is wide range reconstruction season. So there will be a link in the description, uh, probably right next to where I put the link to this guitar. Uh, in the description below where you can send your pickups in if you have a Mexican um, reissue with the wide ranges in it or you have a Squire with the wide ranges in it because uh, they're not that great. And so we take them apart and we make a bunch of changes to them and we send them back to you and they sound fantastic. We have a link to it. Um, well, we have a video about it. I'll try to find a link to that as well. I'll put that down there so you can hear them. Uh, but they sound really good and we're doing that right now. We only do it a couple of times a year until the end of August, that window is open. So there you go. Uh, wide range stuff from Fender and also from us here at Dylan Talks Tom, pretty cool. And in another wacky thing that Fender is doing that I think either nobody or everybody will buy. Let me know in the comments below if this thing appeals to you or not, I'm not really sure. I don't want one, but I know there's a lot of Beatles fans. George Harrison's Rocky Stratocaster. Um, he took a 61 Strat, he put Dagolo paint all over it, and then used it on a lot of Beatles records. Fender uh, did a really expensive custom shop version of this. I don't remember when they did it. It wasn't, it was a few years ago now. But anyways, they did a, a super expensive one. You know, obviously they do that. But now this one is quote unquote more affordable. So, um, this is based on a 61 Strat. It's got a 725 radius fretboard, vintage frets, the whole, you know, it's the whole thing. It has the, uh, Ventera 60s pickups in it. It's sonic blue on the back, just the way his was, but then got all the day glow stuff on the front. My gut feeling tells me, and I don't a hundred percent know this for sure, but I was trying to do some research on it. It sounds like it's just a Ventera 60s Strat with more or less with a couple of tweaks and a fancy paint job on the front for 2000 bucks. So if you're into this thing, it's there. Let me know if this is something that you would buy because it's a George Harrison thing. Would you buy it because it looks cool or you think it looks cool? Or is this a, a hard pass for you? I don't know. Um, it's, it just depends how much you're into the Beatles. I'm not. So, you know, but you know, yeah, let me know in the comments if this is something that you're into because it's a wacky one. Speaking of not wacky, I know some people will think this is, but I think this is very cool investing in the youth and investing in the future of guitar. Epiphone has come out with two new power players, Les Paul and SG electric guitars. These are smaller bodied guitars with Epiphone uh, pickups in them. And they the scale is 22.73, so tw almost 22 and three quarter inch scale. Uh, you'll see there's no stop bar and tailpiece. That makes sense because the body is smaller. So uh, it's got a wraparound bridge. It looks like it's compensated though. It'll probably be fine. Um, normal controls uh, on these things. So a little less Paul and a little SG for younger players. They've got decent Epiphone pickups in them and they also have um, like nickel hardware and trapezoid inlays. Like 
they look like a real guitar for a younger player, which I think is really cool. It's like, there's no compromises here. They're actual good little guitars and they're not expensive. I wanna say they're under $300. So um, this is a very cool thing. I, again, this is a not for everybody thing, but if you have a, a young player coming up and you want to uh, invest a little bit of money and see if this is something that they're gonna stick with, this is, this is a deal. I think this is very, very cool. We know we have the Affinity Stratocaster and Telecaster on the Fender side, but those are full-size guitars. And when you get into three-quarter size guitars, the options are very, A, limited and not very good as far as feeling like, you know, dad's guitar or mom's guitar. You know, it doesn't feel the same. So I think this is a really, really cool thing uh, to get younger players playing. I really, really dig this. We have been having a blast here at Dylan Talks Tone because we added some content. So uh, we have a live stream tomorrow night, Thursday night at 8 p.m. Eastern where we do Q&A stuff from you, from Patreon, from YouTube members, from everybody that's in the chat. There's been new people every week lately and new faces, I mean, you know, new names, but you know what I mean, new faces in the chat. It's been super cool uh, to quote unquote, meet as many of you as possible and exchange ideas and questions and answers. I've really enjoyed that. Uh, and then we've got another video coming out on Monday, which is a review of a guitar that you have not seen yet on the channel because I have not really shared it on the channel. So this is gonna be kind of a surprise thing for you. I think you'll dig this and it's another option that you're gonna love. And then on Tuesdays, we added another live stream because um, it's a way for me to go back through the comments of the last week and, uh, sh and, and talk about some of those with you as well as some other music news that doesn't really have anything to do with gear. So I didn't wanna like clog this thing up and make it any longer. So uh, we're doing a live stream sometime late afternoon on Tuesdays. So look out for that. I think you are gonna dig it. I had a lot of fun doing it yesterday. And uh, thanks for hanging out. Hit the subscribe button and the like button and we'll see you in the next video, which is tomorrow.